no matter what reason you get into the martial arts, it's a way of life. Once once it bites you and you get infected and become a martial arts zombie, it'll just make you want to improve everything in your life, not just martial arts. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in for episode 17 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. That's right, we're still here and growing strong. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also the founder of Whistlekick, makers of the best sparring gear on earth, as well as great apparel and accessories for traditional martial artists. You can learn more about our products, like our sparring gloves that are cut shorter and have a lot more ventilation, at whistlekick.com. And you can learn more about the podcast, including all of our past episodes, show notes for this one, and a whole lot more, all for free, over at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. While you're there, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter full of information, discounts, and useful martial arts content. And now for this week's iTunes review. And this one is from Joel. Joel titles his review, which is a five-star review, Always Been a Fan of Martial Arts. I only took a year or two of martial arts as a young kid. I wish I could have done it longer. I've always enjoyed martial arts, and I used to be glued to the television during Saturday Kung Fu flick marathons. Those were awesome. I still can't get enough of martial arts films, so now to have martial arts conversations right in my earbuds is awesome. Thank you. Keep rocking. Joel. Today's episode is with Sensei Earl Smith. He's an instructor in the blended style Kempo Jiu-Jitsu, as well as Eskrima. We've had the opportunity to train together a couple of times, and I can personally attest to his skill with a rattan stick. Sensei Smith was very open during our conversation, and I found myself inspired at his passion for the martial arts. I hope that you, too, come away inspired. And now, Sensei Smith, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you. I'm very excited. It's uh, nice to be here, Mr. Lesniak. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. So let's, um, you know, I, I know a little bit about you. You know, we, we've trained a little bit, and we, we, you know, we've got some people in common, but why don't you take it back, because most of the people listening aren't going to know a lot about you. Tell us how you got started in the martial arts. All right. Well, uh, I was in high school. I was about 15. Uh, to be honest, I, I got into the martial arts for all the wrong reasons. Um, <laughs> I was just a little smart aleck kid, you know, uh, you know, with a, you know, quick wit and, you know, whatnot, and uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, heavy set, you know, and... Uh, my friends, they were all like, hey, there's this martial arts class. We should check it out. And I was like, whatever, you know, no way. And they all went and they came back. They had a great time and they learned all this really cool stuff. And I'm like, oh, my word, they're going to be able to beat me. <laughs> and so I went the next week and, you know, and here we are. They all quit after about, you know, a year. And I stuck with it for the last like 20 some on years. Oh, wow. <laughs> why Why'd you stick with it? Uh, well, actually, it was... Uh, it, I was kind of in and out of it, to be honest, at first, and I, until about I got my purple belt um, in the uh, uh, Kempo Jiu-Jitsu series or style, and uh, and I went to this one. We host uh, a huge black belt camp every summer for the black belt testing, and of course I was a low rank, and I went to this test, and I got to see how everything worked, and I got to see the uh, spirituality of the martial art that that we do, and and it bit me and I got infected and I just couldn't stop at that point. Like I, I, I knew what I wanted and, and I went for it. Kind of like mar martial arts zombieism. <laughs> Precisely. <That sounds> like <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like eating brains only you're learning martial arts, you know? Yeah. Sounds a lot tastier. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So that gives us a little bit of context. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's funny you bring up, you know, the, the summer event and, and um, bringing people together for testings, because that was kind of the impetus for this show. I, I, some of my favorite memories are being around campfires after a long testing or, or a summer training event or, or whatnot, and hearing all the great stories that people have, especially the masters who, you know, you know, when you're, when you're a kid or a, a martial arts kid, a younger rank, you seem to think that they've been around forever and have seen everything, but um, I'm sure you've got some great stories. So why don't you tell us your best one? Oh wow! Um, I'd have to say uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, we we went out to California. Um, basically, 
this whole trip was to help my my teacher, um, Professor uh, Frank R. Ricardo, uh, was to help him get promoted um, to get his uh, <clears throat> well, actually so he could become a professor, uh, get promoted from CBOC to professor. And while we were out there, he's the kind of person that you know makes sure that we're booked, you know, a hundred percent of the time, you know, about yeah. four hours of sleeping and 20 hours <laughs> of training and doing demos and, you know, that kind of stuff. And sure. yeah, hardcore, you know, and, uh, and well, you know, we got to meet so many amazing martial artists like world renowned, uh, Wally J. Uh, that's, that's yeah. what I want to talk about actually, is that's probably my favorite story. Okay. Um, we, he just decides he wants to go visit Wally J and Wally J's house, his dojo was attached right to the house, you know? And so we show up on his doorstep and he says, why don't you guys sit right here? And we're like, okay, cool. And he's like, by the way, those are the exact steps that Bruce Lee used to sit on to wait and train with uh, Wally J. So think about that. <laughs> Let's take, take a second for people that may not know who Wally J is. Can you just give us a little bit of context? Uh, Wally J was the founder of small circle jujitsu. Um, an, a, an amazing man, like an amazing martial artist. He's actually a Hall of Fame. Uh, he's 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 world renowned in in what he does. Um, uh, it it's hard to explain it. Uh, you you find him anywhere you look on the internet. Just look up you know small circle jujitsu or or even Professor Wally J, and you're going to get a ton of information. Okay. Um, he passed away a couple of years ago now, and uh, and it, it hasn't been the same since, I guess. But uh, Sure. Um, All right. So here you are. You're sitting on his steps. Yep, we're sitting on those steps. Ready to, to meet him, the, the steps that Bruce Lee used to wait on. Yep. Okay, and, what, and what happens next? Uh, well, my teacher goes inside, and then a few minutes later, he comes out, and he you know asks us all to step inside. And we get in there, and uh, we meet uh, his wife, Bernice J. And I have to say that she is probably one of the most amazing people I've ever met, you know, Maybe even a little bit more so than Wally J, to be honest. <laughs> she was just like, uh, you know, and, you know, he wasn't feeling well, you know, so she had us out in the dojo and she and uh, my teacher, you know, uh, Professor Ricardo was just like, hey, let us uh, let us show you some stuff. She's like, oh, I'd love that. You know, she she herself was like a third degree in uh, um, Don Zanru underneath uh, Henry S. Okazaki. Um, and so we're doing our demo. We have lots of like you know, jujitsu and judo throws and, and, you know, we're all over the place slamming each other all over the floor, you know, really hammering each other. And, and she's just whistling and clapping. And, and she's <laughs> like, I love seeing excellent throws. Like, that's awesome. She's like, you're, I'm going to have to get him out here so you can see this, oh. you know? And, and so we go into the living room actually where he's, you know, got his little bunny slippers on and he's got a blanket and he's in his little lazy boy chair <laughs> and he's really cold and not feeling well. And, uh, we all sit on the couches or on the floor, you know, or, you know, kind of around him and, uh, and professor Ricardo's chatting with him, talking to, talking to him. And, uh, and next thing we know, Wally, I, I don't know, we just brought this energy with us everywhere we went and he just hops out of the chair and just starts beating my teacher up right there in the living room floor, <laughs> you know, putting him in all the, the, the famous, like, you know, finger locks and everything that you'll see him do. And that, that right there is probably one of the best stories, you know, best, best places to be ever, you know, and then after that, we went out to the dojo and he even came out and, and he watched us do our demo and, and it was, it was amazing. I even have an autographed book from him and, you know, everything is it's pretty cool. That's that's a quite the story. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I was right there with you on, <laughs> on the couch, and I could just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear how much of an impact that event has had on you. Yes, yeah. It, it's one of those things that just another another bite that keeps getting infected. You know. Yeah. How, how old would he have would he have been at that? point? I think he was eighty two at that time. Okay. Okay, so it's not uncommon for an 82-year-old man to spend a lot of time in a chair under a blanket. No, no. Not feeling so well, but, you know, once he got up, I'm guessing that he probably, you probably couldn't tell. No, no. You, that he wasn't feeling no, well. No, he, and he was like, wow, I'm feeling great now. And then we took him out to lunch <laughs> afterward. It was like, awesome. <laughs> you had to... to bring the virus back out in him, right? Pretty much. And that's something that kind of happened. Uh, we also uh, went and trained with uh, another grandmaster over in uh, Sacramento, actually, area of California, uh, Duke Moore. Um, and, yeah, he, he 
we went over, we picked him up and he's just like, oh, I'm not feeling so good. I'm going to have my student work with you. And then we start training and he just hops out on the floor and he's just doing all this like amazing stuff. We have one guy that was in my black belt, you know, class with me, my black belt brother, um, big guy. He was about maybe 375 pounds, you know, main state champ in wrestling, you know, like, and this, this little frail, like 85 year old man, um, just takes him and throws him like he was a rag doll. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was part of the lesson for us because you know we were doing um his his black belt boards he was teaching us his black belt boards and it was stuff that we'd all done already so it was kind of easy for us and and i guess it sadly you know we're young we're all like you know young bucks 20 years old and we're not taking it seriously and he's this is one of the best lessons i ever learned is he stepped up and he's like throws throws mr tibbetts like he's like nothing and then he's like you guys are you know like you're black belts, you know, you should act like a black belt, you know, like, like, it doesn't matter if this comes easy to you, you know, but you need to present yourself to the world in a way that is going to be, you know, um, that shows who you are and what you are. And you don't want to be that slacking little, you know, jokester, you know, he's like, man up, <laughs> basically. Mm. And, and that was one of the most valuable lessons I got right there. That's some pretty good advice. Yeah. Cool. So you've been training a long time and, and, you know, you may have gotten into it for less than the best reasons, but clearly you didn't stick with it for those same reasons. Did not. So, so I'd like you to think about how the martial arts has changed who you are and how you've benefited, you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually, however you want to define that question and then answer it. How, how are you a better person because of the martial arts? Well... Um, that's an, actually an amazing question. And I, I, I think about this all the time. And, and what I would say is the martial arts has severely held my confidence. Um, like I said, I was like that, you know, that fat kid at high school that kind of was in the background. Everybody knew me, but nobody really hung out with me or did much with me. I had a core group of friends and, um, through the martial arts, I gained a whole bunch of self-confidence and I guess people notice when you're confident in your yourself and your abilities and and they treat you you know that way you know and and you become mm. you know more uh you know like sought after i guess you know and and that's and i guess that's the best thing it's done for me is it's made me more confident in myself my abilities and it's taught me to do the best in everything that i do and, and that's kind of what i strive for is when i do something i want to make it the, at least the best that i can do and if not a little bit better Sure. You can always give another 1%. Right? Exactly. You know, at least attempt to put out another 1%. Right. Absolutely. So I'd like you to think now about a low point in your life, something, some challenge, that, some wall, obstacle, roadblock, whatever you want to call it, in front of you that you overcame and how your martial arts training gave you the, the ability to do that. Oh, uh, wow. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I necessarily have like a wall that I had to overcome so much, but I do have a down point or down point in my, my career that okay. happened. Sure. Um, I got basically, uh, you know, living so far away, I kind of got discommunicated from my, you know, from my, uh, my teacher and in, in school and whatnot. And, and it, it, it definitely made things a lot harder, you know, and then I went several years without ever, you know, um, training with anyone that was uh, of a higher caliber, I guess, I, you know, like a, like a master or, you know, grandmasters or anything. I haven't, I didn't get to, didn't get to do any of the traveling. I didn't get to do any of the, you know, the high end, you know, learning. I, I just spent my, yeah. my days stuck in Vermont, you know, uh, honing what I had and then just pouring over and teaching what, you know, what I had. And, and it kind of, kind of was kind of depressing, you know, and until uh, a couple of years ago when finally I got to go back out to San Francisco and I went and trained with uh, uh, senior grandmaster Rick Alamany, um, something that Mr. Hartz set up for me um, to get promoted actually, because I hadn't been promoted in like, you know, 13 years. And, and, and he, he, uh, talked with me quite a bit and he's just like yeah we got to get you promoted he's like i want you to come out and visit me 
and so we made it happen and I, I got promoted to my fourth degree. Cool. Okay, so here you are, you're in Vermont and you've kind of set up your little box. Yeah. You know, you're you're training, you're teaching, and in your world, if if I can possibly take some liberty with your language, your your martial arts world was kind of small. Yeah, yeah. At that point, it just listening to the the language and the tone of your voice, it, it sounded, you know, very different versus what you were talking about, you know, just five minutes ago. Yeah, almost abandoned, you know. So yeah, so so you'd lost your maybe some of the the motivation to train. You know, you were working within some pretty small parameters that you'd set up for yourself, and here you get this opportunity. You know, because of one of your students, because of someone that that was in your box with you and saw that you should have a bigger box. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and so, and Mr. You know, Hartz is one of the most passionate people that I know and he wanted to help me and he did. <laughs> he is. He is. He's, he's a, a good man. And for anyone listening that doesn't know him, um, you know, he's the one that introduced us and, and uh, we have at least one guest that's going to be coming on the show in the future that he – one other guest, I should say, that is going to come on the show that has quite a bit of background that he made the connection. So um, good guy and, and a good person to have in your corner. So Absolutely. Yeah. So what, what was it like on the other side of that? You get, go out there and, and, and you train and, and – your world opens up again and, and, and you're promoted and I'm assuming you're feeling good and connect the dots from then to now. Um, well, uh, when we did all that, I actually made contact again with uh, one of my other uh, black belt brothers, uh, Master Wynn. Well, Master Wynn now, now at the time he was just Mr. Wynn still um, when we went out to San Francisco. But uh, he and I... Uh, um, we've been training together. We were training partners for many, many years. I mean, we went and trained the, you know, special forces, 101st Airborne together, you know, underneath our teacher, Professor Ricardo, obviously. And, but he and I were the ones that were the demo, you know, like we were the ones swinging the sticks. We were the ones, you know, trying to, you know, like show what it was at, at a high caliber, high level, you know, so that they know what they could aspire to. And, uh, so anyways, he and I got to, he came, I invited him to come out with us and that's when he got his, his master rank. And so that it bridged that gap again. So I had my contact and, and now I'm in steady contact with, with master Wynn. he and I, you know, chat regularly and we, we try to hook up. He lives over in Maine, over in Waterboro. And, uh, so we, we get together as frequently as possible. He came down just about a month ago to do a little seminar for us and whatnot. And it, it was, it was good times. And so this, this whole experience had kind of rekindled my, my drive and whatnot. And, and so I've started, you know, teaching more and, and, and picking on, you know, picking up people who were interested again and, and teaching. I, I, I haven't charged for teaching martial arts in a few, several years now I it's something that's passionate it's a passion of mine and I, I I believe everybody should should learn some form of the martial art you know and 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 so I feel that I pass that on you know as, as best I can you know sure sure and I'm sure you're not saying that you know just in case anybody's listening and and taking issue with that you're not saying that everyone should be teaching for free no 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 definitely it's just not. it's it's what works for you based on you know what it, it's hard in my area want. with sure. with like very few people because i i'm you know from johnson vermont where you know there's maybe there's more cows than people you know and and you know i don't want to grapple with a cow because they're bigger and stronger <laughs> you know and you know so i would just take anybody who's interested and, and that's how i did sure. things you know and yeah. and I used to run a school i ran a, a successful school for quite a long time and then people you know the bud, you know, the, the recession and the, you know, the, the, the you know, the big, it's hard. Yeah, and, and I ended up having to pay to teach people martial arts. And so I figured I'd rather, you know, not do that. <laughs> right. So I went to just teaching for free and I would just do it outside, you know, no overhead, you know, and just, and, you know, and that's, that's how sure. I did it. Or I would trade right. it for food, you know, sometimes. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, I think there's something to be said for that, that that's kind of, it was, it was so, I you know, would keep my skills because I, I didn't want 
to, you know, to lose out. And I still needed training partners. So I, that's basically what it was. I pick up training partners and, 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 you know, Mr. Hartz, uh, he is one of those people actually. He found me up at where I work at Johnson State College and he's like, teach me. I'm like, well, all right. Well, if you want to learn, then you're going to start at the beginning and you're going to do everything the way I tell you to do it. And he's like, okay. And we started and you know, now he's pushing for his black belt soon, you know? Yeah. Cool. It's a great way to do it. And I, I, what I love about that and just the way you're, you're expressing it, it it's, I, I'm assuming that there's, there's some, some, um, that that's how it used to be. You know, if we go way, way back, you know, when martial arts was a little less organized, that it was, you know, it was more familial, you know, passed down. Yeah, it's very, uh, son very and, Padawan-like, you know, like, yeah, you know, teacher and student. Yeah, and, and I, I really dig that. I think that's that's a fun dynamic and um, certainly not an easy one, but um, I've got a lot of respect for it. So you've trained with a bunch of different people. Yes. But I'd like you to think of someone other than those that you would consider your immediate instructors. And you mentioned a couple of them by name. But I'd like you to think of somebody other than them that was instrumental in, let's call it your martial arts upbringing. Oh. Tell us who that person is and, and what it was they did for you. Well, I got to meet Professor Kufarath a long time ago. He came out to one of our actual seminars or something like he did a seminar for us and he was just such a humble humble man and you know he was 80 something years old and he's out there and he just does his own thing too like everybody will be all stressed out and busy doing something and, and running around with their heads cut off and he's out there and it looks like he's doing a dance and all he's doing is just like he's um i don't remember what it's called exactly but he's just swinging his arms back and, you know, back and forth. And, and he's moving in a way that looks almost like a Jenga actually from like, uh, the capoeira system. Yeah. And he's just massaging his heart points on the front of his chest and the back of his chest. Um, and cause that's one of his styles was, uh, the, uh, he did, he was the, uh, grandmaster of Kempo and he was the grandmaster of Don Zan Ru. He was one of the first people to become like a dual 10th degree black belt in two different whole styles. And he also was a, um, uh, what do you call it? Like one of the main people for um, Sifuku Jutsu, which is the Japanese restoration therapy and Chinese herbology. And so he knew all these like um, pressure points and and whatnot to massage, you know, to help you stay healthy and alive and whatnot. And so he's out there just swinging his arms around, looks like he's dancing, and he's he's actually like extremely, you know, precise in where he's touching, and and he's basically just keeping his heart up and going and and, and running. And also another great thing about the man is is he put Tabasco sauce on every single. <laughs> thing his ice cream he would be sprinkling tabasco sauce on it swear to you know swear to whoever you want um and he said it's because it kept the cold out of you <laughs> the man had never caught cold and i guess something like 30 years because he put tabasco sauce on everything i, I, I guess if it works it works it right? worked for him but i also think that it has something to do with all the chinese herbology and everything that he was into as well so but <laughs> So what was it about him? What did, what did you find so inspiring? Yeah, or? inspiring, I guess. Um, he was just an old guy that you, you could just tell he had an air of confidence, you know, and, and he was just fun-loving. Um, it was his birthday that weekend, too, which was hilarious. And, you know, my teacher got him a card. And, you know, I, I don't know if this is, you know, G-rated or not, but it was a card with some, you know, women on it. and uh, mm -hmm. And he ended up, like, poking a hole through it and sticking his nose through and you know and, and this is an 82 year old man just just having fun you know and yeah and I, and I think that I'm drawn to people who are don't take themselves too seriously but yet have that air of confidence and and are extremely good at what they do I think you know I, I haven't done any kind of formal study but the really high-ranking martial arts masters that I've been exposed to tend to have more of that sense of humor and that that 
willingness to not take life too seriously than the average population. Would you would you agree? Uh, actually, I have run into some high ranking martial artists that uh, that take themselves way too seriously. Well, I, I, absolutely. No, I'm, <laughs> I, I I can think of a few right now, but it just if I I'm. I, I'm working within my my sample set, my yeah, my data yeah. here, you know, and I'm just. It seems like more more often than not, they, you know, as you were describing that man with the the sense of humor and everything, it it describes most of the masters that I've. Met. I'd have to say it definitely describes most of the elder masters. Yeah, you know, like the ones that have lived life and they understand that it's about having fun and not being stressed out. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonder if there's something there. Who knows? Exactly. All, all, all kinds of all kinds of theories coming out of this show that maybe someday I'll have the the money to <laughs> research and commission studies, and we'll find absolutely nothing as a result. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> maybe it just comes down to the people. Yeah. Have you? Do you have any experience with competition? Um, no, I Is that ever no, I do not. I I don't. I'm not much of a competitor myself, and I'm, it's not that I'm against it. I, I believe in in competition. I'm just I I I don't know. I'm not a I, I'm not a competitor. Now I have taught and trained a lot of people who have wanted to compete and have competed. Mm -hmm. um, I've had several students go on and do like jujitsu tournaments and whatnot. And it's actually um, the, the one in particular that I remember. Um, it's kind of funny because he went in and he won every single match that he was in. But um, the problem was he beat them in about, you know, 16 seconds and not transition for points. So he just get the three points for the win. And then when that person was doing the matches against other people, you know, he's getting like, you know, 10, 15 points because, you know, they're just doing, going from, you know, mount to guard to mount to side mount, you know, they're transitioning, you know, and trying to get the points up. Right. And uh, our guy just goes in, does a standing choke, passes the guy out, and and, and he's like, he's out, he's out, <laughs> you know, and he lays him down lightly, and you know, and and he won, but he came in last place. <laughs> oh, because of because of points, because of points, you know, and oh. and so so we had to re rethink our 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 stance on how we did things there. <laughs> but yeah, so our style never really competed very well. Um, now that they're starting to do a lot of those, like. Uh, the uh, stick fighting um, tournaments and whatnot. I, I think that we might be able to transition better into that. That would be fun to watch. I'd like to see that. Yeah, they're 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 intense and and, and a lot of fun. Oh, cool. Well, maybe if one of those is coming up, you know, somewhat nearby, we can we can go. I'd love to check that yeah, out. Yeah, that would be amazing. So you've had the opportunity to train with a lot of great martial artists, but. If you could train with someone that you haven't, living or, or dead, who would you want to train with? Hmm. I would say it would be a toss-up between James Maitosi and Henry S. Okazaki, or both. Okay. Um, and, which who is funny they? because those are the two that uh, Professor Kufarath trained under, both of them. And he became the Grandmaster pretty much in both styles. Um, okay. but, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> those two, um, so tell us a bit about those two people and James Mitosi what is, it about is basically the father of Kempo in the, uh, you know, in the United States and, uh, Henry S. Okazaki is the, uh, um, he was the head of, uh, Don Zanru Jiu Jitsu and, uh, which is a you know kind of a an amazing art all on its own as well. Um, but uh, they both were in Hawaii at the same time, and they both had their respective schools, and and they were basically the they were the who's who of of jujitsu and you know basically kempo karate, mm -hmm. and they were phenomenal phenomenal men from what I've heard you know from the stories passed down. And I think that going and training with them would have been an amazing, you know, time and, you know, worthwhile experience, you know, and 
which yeah. is funny because Kufarath was actually Henry S. Okazaki's student, and they traded number one students to each other, kind of <laughs> testing each other out. And then, yeah. And then Kufarath basically then became the number one student of both sides. <laughs> wow, that's to to achieve that level of knowledge exactly in multiple styles. I mean, that's pretty darn impressive. And um, yeah, yeah, I. I don't think I know anyone that's taken multiple styles that far. So awesome. You a movie guy at all? You got any favorite martial arts films? Oh my word. Um, favorite martial arts films. There's so many. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for pretty, um, I really loved, uh, only the strong there with Mark DeCascos. Uh, yeah. The uh, Capoeira. Um, mm-hmm. I also really enjoy uh, like the kung fu style films as well. Those are those are a lot of fun. Um, like my favorite comedic kind of martial arts film is uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, uh, those are those are great movies. I, mean, <laughs> I haven't seen only the strong in years, but yeah, um, that was I actually some went of and the... bought it recently so I could watch it again. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That was some of the impetus for me to to actually seek out a capoeira instructor. Oh, nice! For a couple of years, so yeah, yeah, it's a good film. Well, no, it's not a good film. But <laughs> it's, there's some good sequences in it. I guess is probably better to say. Yeah, yeah, it, it's fun to watch. It's not a. It's it not is. a uh, a movie. No, not not it, not at all. How about actors? Any in particular um, that you like? I, to be honest, I really am a fan of uh, Jeff Speakman. Yeah, I haven't heard that name from anybody in a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was uh, basically a Filipino stick guy, and he yeah. did that in several of his movies. And and so, yeah, I, I kind of really like him because, you know, I know where he comes from. <laughs> right. Well, that's cool. How about books? Uh, Recommendations? I read one. I think it's called The Martial Way. I can't remember the author now. But uh, it's about a man who kind of found himself through martial arts and, you know, living the martial way. I think it's what it's called, actually, living the martial way. And, uh, and yeah, he has an amazing story, of, you know, going into the military and then coming out and not really knowing what to do and not being able to do much. And then joining the martial arts and then gaining control of his life through the martial arts. Um, also, uh, one of my students wrote a book about his life. Um, oh. Uh, I can't remember exactly. It's called uh, something through the Kai, you know, or whatever. Uh, living or finding Christianity through martial arts, something like that. He's an okay. he was an extremely or is an extremely religious, you know, person. And and the uh, and also, you know, one of my one of my you know best black belts too. Um, he uh, <clears throat> wrote the book about you know his his whole experience and whatnot and how the martial arts played an intricate part in his in his religion and in his life and he dedicated it to me i'm one of the people he dedicated the book to oh wow that's yeah. re- that's really interesting let's uh make sure when we finish this up that we can find that and get the link into the show notes yeah okay so that's yeah that's you like know, it if i if i you know pushed his book you know get a few more you know dollars out of that. <laughs> sure <laughs> well it's an it's an interesting um idea because i think for so many of us martial arts is is so spiritual however we define spirituality it can be such a, a vehicle to move us actually uh, in whatever direction we want speaking of that um i trained i did a little bit of training with uh um great grandmaster ralph castro um he was shaolin kempo and okay. his take on it was he had a very you know um christianity take on the martial arts and he actually incorporated um a lot of the uh you know his religious beliefs into what he did and i remember like you know like his whole like rising sun was something about the angels and and it was actually very 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 cool yeah i I, you know i think one of the things that i've found myself saying on the show a very personal belief for me about the martial arts is that you get out whatever you put in it's 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 a direct correlation you know the more you put in the more you get out in a way that you don't really have in other elements of life i mean you can work i could work really really hard to be a great basketball player 
but at at five seven <laughs> on a good day, that's not really going to happen. I'm I'm not going to get back as much as I put in. But with the martial arts, I can do that, and that's something that I've always loved and found fascinating. And so, of course, I mean, why why not? Why can't your your spiritual journey be wrapped in with that? You know, whether it's an Eastern or a Western or any other kind of religious philosophy. Exactly. You know, um, <clears throat> I, I, I believe wholeheartedly that the martial arts is what you make it, you know, and, and if that's what, um, draws to you, then, then that's where you go. Yeah. So you've, you've certainly accomplished a lot. You've, you've had quite the martial arts path. <laughs> yes. But I'm sure you're not done. So I'd like to know what, what keeps you going? Any any goals or um, things you're reaching for? Well, uh, right now I'm 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 looking to reopen a school again here soon. Uh, one of my one of my black belts is the principal of a school over in my area and over in Winooski, and he was running a successful program out of the school for you know several years, but he has just gotten to the point where he's so busy and he can't really you know manage it anymore and so pretty soon i'm you know starting probably this next school year i'm thinking about um you know talking to him and getting that up and going again and, mm. and try and get the program running again um i'm also now that i'm on you know third shifts or whatnot i'm hoping to go and uh, uh work with you know mr lenahan and mr hearts you know more frequently as well and uh pick up some mm -hmm. stuff from from mr lenahan he has a lot of stuff that i i'm really interested in and, and learning it's mostly you know about kicking because i come from a kempo background which is fist law you know lots of punching and right. you guys are you know the taekwondo which is the kicking side that i need <laughs> sure and, uh, and and of course for for anybody listening i'm not sure what episode and when we'll release this one you know that we're recording now but uh master lenahan's episode was episode 12 which um just came out um a couple days prior to now i mean it's we're, we're recording two days after that episode was released so that's kind of funny <laughs> uh, so yes yeah, so i'm looking forward to uh working with you know more people also that's another right? man that was very humbling as well um master rhoda uh <laughs> my instructor yeah yeah uh he you uh i did that one seminar there like a couple of years ago and he came up yeah. and he wanted me to do all the techniques on him and i'm just <laughs> yeah. no i i can't i can't do this to you you know you're 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 the master you know like like i'm supposed to beat up the little guys <laughs> you're supposed to beat me up <laughs> and it was and he's like oh no no i love it i love the pain i love i love the <laughs> he, feel of it do it it hurt me throw he, me on the ground and i'm like okay <laughs> So, some of you listening may think that that Sensei Smith is taking some liberties or or you know bordering on disrespect, but anyone that has trained with Master Rhoda um, knows that if anything, he's selling him short. Uh, we recorded an episode yesterday with his son, who told a couple stories that will just completely support everything you just said so uh, <laughs> look look for that coming in the next few weeks that's uh master I, there no disrespect whatsoever i have no no the, not at all respect for that for the for master rota he he <laughs> proved to me that age is definitely not a barrier <laughs> no no age and and some some joint replacements and some <laughs> major surgeries and and he still likes getting knocked around he's 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 a good man. Well, that's cool. Getting getting your own school back up and going, and um, keep me informed. I'll, I'll I'll love to come out and Definitely. hang out with you guys when that happens. So you shared some some great stories and some great advice with everybody today. But you got anything you want to offer up for parting words of wisdom? Oh wow. Um... I guess, you know, the best thing is no matter what reason you get into the martial arts, uh, it, it, it's, it's a way of life. And once, once it bites you and you get infected and become a martial <laughs> arts zombie, um, it'll just make you want to improve everything in your life, not just martial arts. It, it's like I said, it's a way of life and 
I believe everybody should should experience the martial arts in some fashion. Like it should be a class in school or something. You know, every school it, it should be trained and and it it just makes you want to be a better person and and do everything to the best of your ability. And and the, the, I recommend it highly. <laughs> cool. Yeah. It, it, it's. I don't know what else to say. That's that's a great point to end on. Um. Yeah, you, you got anything else going on? Anything you want to share? Oh, anything that doesn't fit in the context of one of these questions you want to tell us? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of stories, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, you got a short one you want to end on, maybe? Mm. So many fun stories. Um, how about uh, talk a little bit about spirituality of the martial arts, like how okay. how we do it? Um, See, I mentioned our, our, our black belt camps that we have every year in the summertime. Um, basically, all our brown belts that are ready to become black belts, uh, we have a huge camp, and it's a, like a four-day-long process. We show up Wednesday morning, and we train about 20 hours a day for four days. <laughs> wow. Um, first thing you do is you get up around like 5 in the morning, and you have to go run uh, – well, when I was where we were in Maine, um, we run Hessian Hill, a mile and a half, all uphill, and uh. we do that first thing in the morning. Come back, and then we'd start class. You know, doing you know all the basics. You know, punching and kicking, and then then we'd have breakfast, and then we would spend the rest of the day doing whatever techniques um, we were demonstrating for uh, the low low ranks. I'll I'll just go from my black belt test so that way it's okay. easier for me to explain so then we would teach all the, the low ranks you know and work through the basic stuff and whatnot and then you know at some point we'd do an hour for lunch and then we'd i, I never did lunch i actually slept in my on my my eating <laughs> times because i was exhausted <laughs> and so we then um would train again all night until dinner time and then then once dinner time came, everybody else would be able to go out to bed, camp, and whatnot, and the candidates would get separated off, and we would have to work on the black belt only material, and we would be doing that until about two a.m. and then you know <laughs> three a.m. and go to bed, get up at five, and start it all over, and then uh, so you know that's that's the the martial arts part, and then the spiritual part comes in. Um, on the last day, Saturday night at around, you know, midnight, uh, we build the bonfire and everybody circles it. And and what you see is um, the black belts, they oh, I totally missed initiation too. the night before Friday night. All the black belts actually haze the candidates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, initiation basically. Because twenty hours of training isn't yeah, yeah. Isn't enough. So now you go try to go to sleep for the next day and they're gonna mess with your tent and they're gonna keep uh -oh. you up all night. Um I remember on our test actually this is a good story. Maybe we'll end it here. Um we were doing training videos for the military because we were in contact with the uh, you know, the military we're doing um, training for them. You know, I went a couple of times actually with my teacher to help teach the special forces Green Beret. And so we we're doing this video and you know he stuck his hand out a little too far and I swung a little too close and I ended up hitting his hand and I broke his hand. This is with a stick. Yes, with a stick. Okay. Yep. And uh you know we did this um you know so he and this is Mr. Tibbetts that 375 pound state <laughs> champ in wrestling and and utmost respect he did not go to the hospital he stayed and finished the test with a broken hand. It wow. looked like a ham on the end of his wrist <laughs> is how big it got. And I basically broke the two middle bones there just on the, uh, on the other side of his metacarpals there. And uh, so that night, he, we go out to our tents, and he finds about a cord of wood stacked inside his tent. But he, he's, he was a Boy Scout, I think, and, and he was prepared. He had a tarp down. He just kind of wrapped the tarp up, and he dragged all the wood out of his tent and just hopped back in. <laughs> and you know and so um one of the black belts goes up to his tent and they're like oh man how's your hand and i'm watching from the sides you know getting ready to go to bed and i see a couple of bl uh, the black belts around the corner of the building and they've got this white bucket and i'm like oh no what's happening 
And, you know, he's like, how's your hand? You need me to get you some ice? He's like, and, and Mr. Tibbetts is like, oh, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And then I see the black belt, you know, not even looking at backwards. He waves to the other guys and they come around in the corner with these two big buck, five gallon buckets. And, and, you know, Mr. Tibbetts is in his tent and they throw all this ice into the tent oh. on him. <laughs> you know, so there's our hazing, you know. And then they ended up making all, oh, there was four candidates. And they made all four of us sleep in a two-man tent that was put inside a small sandbox. So we had, like, no room. We're, we're stacked up on top of each other. That's how we slept that night. And But the, then we'll get back to the tap out. Um, big bonfire. Everybody's, you know, everything's amped up. We got the big drum beating in the background. Uh, black belts are running in a circle around the fire, you know, going in and out. You know, they're taking turns and whatnot. And then next thing you know, they come running straight at you and hit you for all they're worth. And and you you get snagged and caught and blindfolded and dragged <laughs> off. And that's that's as far as I can talk about it. But but because uh, you have to experience it. And sure. um, I bit both sides of my tongue and I'm bleeding. I look like a zombie, oh. actually. <laughs> and I'm bleeding out my mouth. And it, it was it was amazing. And uh, yeah, so. Wow! When I have one of these uh, tap outs, I'll I'll definitely invite you along so you can come and experience it. That with would us. be that would be great. I, I don't. I'm actually gonna I know how tightly I want to participate after hearing about all that. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like something I could pass up the opportunity on, whether I want to or not. Definitely. So, um, it's a great story to end on, and I and I appreciate it. But yeah, that's yeah. that's the the light of our martial arts and the the hardcore of our martial art. You know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I feel bad. Is that guy's hand? It, it got better. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's good. I, he went on to become a police officer eventually, and okay. and, and so he he got better. Glad to hear that. Well, cool. Um, you know, Sensei Smith, I really appreciate you coming on and and talking to us and sharing such wonderful stories. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, it has. So. Um, yeah, thanks, and, and um, why don't you hang on the line after I, I hit stop on the recorder, and we'll look at the name of that book so we can put it in the show notes for everybody. Yeah, definitely. All right, thanks for being here on Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you for inviting me. It was awesome. Thanks for listening to Episode 17 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you to Sensei Smith for speaking with me. If you liked the show, please subscribe so you never miss out in the future. If you could help us by leaving a five-star review wherever you download your podcast, it would really help. Those reviews help new listeners find the show, and you might hear us read yours on the air. If we do, go ahead and email us at info at whistlekick.com, and you'll get a free prize pack, including a shirt, water bottle, stickers, and some more stuff. We'll even pay the shipping. You can check out the show notes with links to everything we talked about today at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're there, if you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the guest form. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can keep up on all things Whistlekick. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. While you're at it, check out the great stuff we have at Whistlekick.com. Gear, shirts, pants, and a whole bunch more. All made for martial artists by martial artists. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.